Chapter 7 Democracy and Diversity So far, we have studied the meaning of democracy and role of political parties in democracy. Now, in this chapter, we are going to study the meaning of diversity. We will also study in this chapter the relationship between diversity and democracy. All people in the society are never alike. Even if you look at your own town, what do you find? Some people are living in the town since last two generations, while some others have settled here only during the last ten or twenty years. Some among them may be living outside Maharashtra before coming here. Some may have come from Rajasthan, some from Odisha or Orissa, and some even from Nepal and Tibet. Do all people from your town speak Marathi at home, or do they speak the language other than Marathi? People from different regions, speaking different languages, and following different sects, and religions inhabit in any town and city. Such distinct nature of language, religion, region, culture, etc. is called diversity. There is one difficulty in organizing people on any single social basis. Suppose we decide to organize people only on the basis of the language they speak, but people speaking that language will have considerable internal diversity. Imagine that someone is trying to organize all Gujarati speaking people. They may come together on the basis of Gujarati language and culture, but some among them would be city dwellers and some would be living in villages. Gujarati women will say that we are surely interested in the issue of Gujarati language, but our main concerns are about women's labor. How about that? They will then organize both as Gujarati and as women, and the women's organization may be all in the organization. You know that democracy allows people to come together and pursue their demands. Therefore, in a democracy, when there is a diversity, it leads to formation of different groups making political demands based on that diversity. In this manner, democracy always gives rise to political groups based on religion, language, or region. In the last chapter, you have studied political parties. Do you remember from that chapter the regional or state level parties in India? Such parties engage in politics based on the demands and expectations of the people in the respective states. This is one example of the politics in a society having regional diversity. There is one difficulty in organizing people on any single social basis. Suppose we decide to organize people only on the basis of the language they speak, but people speaking that language will have considerable internal diversity. Imagine that someone is trying to organize all Gujarati speaking people. They may come together on the basis of Gujarati language and culture, but some among them would be city dwellers and some would be living in villages. Gujarati women will say that we are surely interested in the issue of Gujarati language, but our main concerns are about women's labor. How about that? 
they will then organize both as Gujarati and as women and the women's organization may be all in the organization. Thus, there is no single and straight answer to the question, who we are. We may simultaneously be Marathi from the Vidarbha region and Muslim. In such a situation, what will be our identity? Such a person will not only be Marathi, only from Vidarbha or only a Muslim. This person will be a Marathi Muslim person living in Vidarbha. So, this person may have different expectations simultaneously. At some point, this person will support an organization based on language. At the same time, he or she can participate in an organization working for demands of the Vidarbha region. And such a person can also be attending an assembly of Muslim community. In this manner, democracy allows politics on the basis of various interests. But at the same time, there is a scope in democracy to engage in politics going beyond our social groups. In all democratic societies, you will find that different special groups do get organized. But often, different social groups come together and try to press for their common demands. Religious Diversity and Democracy It is necessary that there are cordial relations among different religions when people of different religions are living together. Otherwise, Diversity may lead to inequality and conflict. People of different religions such as Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Buddha, Jain, Christian, Zoroastrian and Jew live in India. So, India has adopted policy of secularism from the beginning. These people celebrate their respective festivals and follow religious rituals. There are economic and trade relations across religions. Many a times, people also participate in each other's religious functions. But sometimes, people of different religions experience situations of difference of opinion, competition and even tension. In such situations, Government has to intervene and regulate the situation. In other words, religious diversity leads to different types of relations such as tolerance, cooperation, competition and conflict. Some measures are adopted to ensure peaceful coexistence of people of different religions. The most important measure is to allow every person to adopt a religion of his or her own choice and faith and follow the religion in worship and prayers. This is called freedom of religion. The second measure is that government must treat persons of all religions equally. Equal respect for all religions is a part of this measure. Equal treatment is important because if one religion is treated as superior to another, this leads to competition among different religious groups. The third measure for handling religious diversity is protecting minority religious groups and taking special care for the development. If this does not happen, it would lead to backwardness among some religious communities. Economic and educational backwardness among one community produces an atmosphere of mutual distrust among religious communities. Therefore, it is necessary to take every caution about equal development of people belonging to all religions.
diversity and unity. In olden days, it was believed that unity can be created and maintained easily if the society is homogeneous. For the small and less diverse societies of Europe, this idea was indeed applicable. But in the 20th century, intermixing has increased across the world. Now, most societies are more diverse than in the past. As a result of this, people now live along with people who are different from each other. This experience shows that diversity does not necessarily obstruct unity. In our society, we have always experienced diversity of languages, regions, religions and sects. India's freedom struggle has shown that unity can be shaped in spite of such diversity. That is why India is an important example of the claim that unity and diversity can coexist. Caste diversity, the most prominent example of inequality in India, is that of caste system. Indian society consists of castes. This feature is more about inequality than diversity. Caste system is like a hierarchy. In this hierarchy, some castes are supposed to be upper and some lower. Traditional caste system even treated some castes as untouchables. Among the castes treated as lower castes, traditionally, there is a high proportion of persons engaged in lower occupations and low incomes. These castes also have lower proportion of the well-educated persons. This makes the concern of caste as the central concern. In the last hundred years or so, India has witnessed many anti-caste movements. These movements aimed at the abolition of caste system. In modern times, Mahatma Phule was the first to emphasize that the true measure for ending caste inequality is to end caste. Shahu Maharaj also tried for the development of backward castes. This same view was expressed in southern India by Periyar Ramaswamy Nekar. Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar also constantly argued and worked for the abolition of untouchability and caste. However, both Mahatma Phule and Dr. Ambedkar insisted that so far as caste exists, backward castes must get just share in education and in government service through policies of the government. This thought has been the main basis of independent India's policy towards caste. So, how did democracy deal with caste discrimination and inequality? As we saw from above, anti-caste views were expressed and movements took place against caste system. This created awareness about the ill effects of caste discrimination. After independence, some legal provisions came into being. For instance, constitution considered untouchability as illegal. Constitution also provided that government should not discriminate among citizens on the basis of caste. Besides, special provisions were made for backward castes. Diversity and share in power. A society with diversity presents one more challenge for democracy. When different groups aspire for power, distribution of power among them becomes a crucial issue. If all power is held only by one social group, 
it would be inconsistent with the principle of democracy. Sharing of power by different groups ensures good interrelationship among the different groups in society. It also strengthens the democracy. Distribution of power in a federation There are different methods of distributing power among different groups. A decision about these methods is taken by considering the situation in the country concerned. When there is linguistic and regional diversity, a method of distributing power among the regions within the country is often adopted. This is known as the federal system of government. Under this form, the constitution itself creates governments as the regional level and decides the powers of the regional level governments. This makes it possible for people from each region to take decisions as per their needs. Decisions regarding the region's language, culture or local practices are not imposed on any region. The decision about the extent of the powers of the regional governments is made by the constitution of the concerned country. Such distribution of power is an important way of maintaining democracy and diversity simultaneously. India has adopted such federal system. Diversity in society No society is uniform in all respects. Some differences are determined by birth, meaning that it is determined by the characteristics we inherit by birth. The other type of distinct character is based on the characteristics that we ourselves acquire. Differences based on language may be an example of first type of difference. Similarly, our place of birth decides our regional character. Difference determined by hobbies, occupation or skills is the other type of distinct nature. When we say that we are Marathi-speaking people, it means that we are born in a Marathi-speaking family. Similarly, when someone says that we are from Satara or Bandara, it means that the family has been traditional resident of that district. Language, region, country are thus factors depending upon birth and leading to differences. The division between men and women is another such biological division. Often, we belong to the religion of the family in which we are born in. But when we grow up, we are free to adopt a religion of our own choice. Or, someone can say that he or she is an atheist. That is, a person does not believe in the idea of God. In this sense, religion and faith are factors that depend on a person's own choice. In this way, we find that people around us belong to different groups. They speak different languages. They belong to different regions. Their religions and religious practices are different. Their occupations are also different. That is why we classify people as farmers, traders, shopkeepers, white-collar employees, etc. This fact that in one society, people having different characteristics live together is understood as diversity. Normally, we do not find any society that is completely homogeneous. Some societies are diverse 
and others comparatively less diverse. For instance, the Chinese society, spread on a huge land stretch, is homogeneous in terms of language. This means that Chinese is the only language spoken there. In contrast, many small societies are multilingual. That means that there are many people speaking different languages. Can you think of such societies from the neighborhood of India? In contemporary times, it is easier to find societies having people of diverse languages, religions or cultures. But in the past, particularly in Europe, most societies used to be inhabited by people of only one religion and even one religious sect. On the other hand, India always had people of different religions living in its society. Diversity of Languages in India When the census is conducted in India after every ten years, every person is asked her or his religion and language. At the time of 1961 census, a list was made listing all languages that were reported by people as mother tongues. It listed as many as 1,652 languages. Even after classifying these languages into groups of major languages, we still have more than a hundred languages. In our constitution, 22 languages are listed. You will find these languages in the eighth schedule of our constitution. Diversity and inequality. One question emerges when people of different languages, religions and regions are living together. This question relates to their interrelations. Many times, one particular group aspires to be more powerful and dominant. It claims that it is superior to others. This produces not only competition among different groups, such claims also produce inequality. Main concern of democracy is to ensure that in spite of diversity, relations among groups have to be cordial and egalitarian. Inequality between men and women The division of human society into males and females is in fact based only on biological differences. But actual social relations are always based on unequal relations between men and women. All societies in the world witness secondary treatment given to women as compared to men. Even in the family, women has less power and most often, family property is in the name of the male persons from the household. Whether it is about wages or about opportunities for promotions, many times we see that Injustice is done on women by giving favorable treatment to men. In addition to this, women also have to face violence, harassment and atrocities both in public places and at the domestic level. Paravai Shinde, who existed from 1850 till 1910, wrote a book called Sri Purush Tulna, which means Comparison of Women and Men. This book, published in 1882, is seen as an important writing expressing the issues of women in equality. Tarabai hails from a family residing in Buldhana in Vidarp. Her family belonged to the Satya Shodak ideology and was the follower of Mahatma Phule. 
क्रांति ज्योति सावित्री बाई फुले वाइफ ऑफ महात्मा ज्योतिबा फुले वॉज रिनाउंड एज पाइनियर ऑफ वुमेन्स एजुकेशन एंड सर्व एज फर्स्ट लेडी टीचर कम हेड मिस्ट्रेस इन द स्टेट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र हर रोल इन विडो रीमैरिज इज मोस्ट नोट वर्दी हर बर्थ एनिवर्सरी इज ऑब्जर्व एज स्त्री मुक्ति दिन इन महाराष्ट्र ड्यूरिंग लास्ट हंड्रेड इयर्स ऑफ सो मेनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ वुमेन रेज द वॉइस अगेंस्ट दिस इनजस्टिस परपेट्रेटेड अगेंस्ट वुमेन दिस लेड टू वुमेन्स मूवमेंट्स मेनी डेमोक्रेटिक कंट्रीज मेड लॉज फॉर रिड्यूसिंग द इनइक्वालिटी बिटवीन मेन एंड वुमेन दिस हैज मेड इट पॉसिबल फॉर वुमेन टू एम फॉर इक्वल डेवलपमेंट In many countries even after the introduction of democracy women did not have the right to vote in elections due to the pressure of women's movements in the 20th century gradually many countries granted the right to vote to women in the case of india after independence our constitution granted to all citizens irrespective of gender right to vote right from the first election itself though women got the right to vote the number of elected women representatives is very low in most countries even today to rectify this various measures are adopted in india too for the last two decades discussions are going on for increasing the political participation of women efforts are also going on to provide reserved seats for women in lok sabha and state legislatures there is already a provision for women's representation in gram panchayats municipal councils municipal corporations and jilla parishads Maharashtra government has increased the reservation for women representatives local government level to the extent of 50% since 2011 besides in Maharashtra there is a system of reservation for women of offices for positions of gram panchayat sarpanches jilla parishad presidents chairpersons of committees presidents of municipal councils and mayors of municipal corporations if we take the global average women account for less than 17% in national legislatures in northern europe this proportion is 40% in rest of europe and also in the american continent women representation is 20% in asia and africa it is barely 16.5% in india we are still unable to cross the 9% mark efforts are also made for bringing about gender equality in matters other than political rights in many countries there is a legal provision that there will be no gender discrimination while giving government jobs constitution of india has also guaranteed that there will be no such discrimination government also implements various programs and schemes for the all round development of women following ways are followed for resolving the issue of gender inequality women's organization and social awareness legal provisions protecting women implementation of welfare schemes special provisions for ensuring share in power for women summary what is the summary of all that we studied so far we saw that all societies have diversity of languages regions sects religions etc when there is diversity it is possible that 
different groups may have unequal relations. If that happens, it leads to social and political problems. And due to this, democratic societies face the challenge of retaining diversity and yet reducing or abolishing inequality. Governments in the democratic societies have to take the main responsibility in this regard. A democratic society has to fulfill five responsibilities with respect to diversity. First, to retain diversity. Second, to ensure amicable and egalitarian relations among different groups. Third, to set aside differences that lead to inequality. Fourth, to govern without discrimination. And fifth, to ensure fair share in power for different groups. Today, people all over the world keep moving and traveling from one place to another. They settle in some other country or in a different part of their own country. Particularly, last few centuries have witnessed such intermixing of people and groups the world over. It is practically impossible to stop this trend. This has made or is making most societies diverse. As a result of this, the approach of looking at diversity and difference between groups is also changing. Diversity introduces us to different ways of life and thinking. Thus, diversity creates an atmosphere more favorable to democracy. Therefore, there is nothing wrong or dangerous in having diversity. On the contrary, in modern times, it is now accepted that everyone benefits from diversity.